Greetings, fellow engineers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of a new mini-series playing Space Engineers. If you would like to skip the game's overview or the scenario I've chosen, please use YouTube chapters, and if you would like to know more, information can be found in the description of this video. Welcome everybody to the September mini-series marathon. For those that don't know, uh, once a month I do a marathon stream playing a game for up to 12 hours as a mini-series. Uh, so, Space Engineers is a sandbox game about engineering, construction, exploration, and survival in space and on planets. Uh, players build spaceships and space stations, planetary outposts of various sizes and uses, and pilot ships and travel through space to explore planets and gather resources to survive. Um, this is a marathon. And the details of this series is that I will be starting in a drop pod landing on the alien planet. The game mode will be survival, uh, but with spiders turned on and unknown signals turned off. So uh, a little bit harder than standard survival, in other words. I'm not using any DLCs. I'm not using any mods. I'm not using any scripts. And I'm also not playing on experimental mode. Um, so the projects for this series are already, I already have designs in my head for what I want to build, but specifically which designs I work on uh, once I get to a point of stability will be left up to you, the live viewers. So let's get started. I'm going to be doing the custom game of a star system because the star system kind of has a little bit of everything. Uh, but like I said, I want to change the settings so all the settings are going to be default survival except all the way down here we're going to turn on spiders and turn off unknown signals so spiders are aggressive spiders that try to kill you think starship troopers and then uh, unknown signals is like care packages which can have materials and cosmetics in them and i, I just don't want to go chasing them down um, they do give you a whole lot of freebies, but it's not something I'm particularly interested in, so we're not going to have them on. So here's all the places that you can start. Um, most of them are in our own solar system. Uh, I mean, Earth is Earth-like. But, uh, but I'm going to be playing the alien world, which is the least, well, Pertam is not really Earth-like either, or not in our galaxy, but uh, alien drop pod. And the alien world is one with very little oxygen um, and greater than Earth's gravity at 1.1 G, which was, what, like something like 11 meters per second or something like that. And uh, it's infested with spiders. I might have to respawn a few times early on, depending on the region. Oh boy, mountains, huh? All right, I'll deal with it. At least ice will be available. Uh, I wonder if I'm on the North Pole or South Pole. I really don't know. Incoming! All right. Yeah, at least it's pretty. And at least ice will be easy to source. Oh! Well... Uh... So here's the thing, I was hoping to repurpose this respawn pod. And if it's broken and upside down... I mean, fine, I will play with it the way it is for the added challenge, but so rude. So rude. Alright, let's go ahead and... Um, I guess one of the atmospheric thrusters broke, which is unfortunate because they're made of cobalt, which is kind of important. Um, I'm going to turn everything off that doesn't need to be on in here. So interior lights are going to turn off. Um, I am going to turn off the ore detector. The O2H2 generator I'm going to leave on. Um, and then before I even do anything else, I want to grab the pistol that's in the passenger seat and then read this data pad because what this data pad will do is it will create a permanent gps marker that follows around this respawn pod oh hi friends uh which is uh pretty nice and already i'm getting spidered well 
Planet's haunted. Can't touch this. No, 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 no. All right. The spiders uh, do drop me materials, which is nice. So that was computers and large tubing. Oh boy. Bunch of scrap. Oh, oh, more bugs, really? I run out of ammo at this rate. Can you come back later? Uh, this is my. Uh, I already down to last clip. All right. Um. So current priority right now is make ammo, cause like, holy heck, you know, I already off to a bad start. So the drop pod. I really hope the survival kit survived, cause if it didn't, I'm screwed. I didn't check that. The drop pod can turn stone and process some stone into material so i'm just gonna mine a little bit of stone to turn it into like iron and silicon and nickel so that i can make some basic ammo um inventory this isn't exactly a tutorial scenario because like i'm relatively new to the game having only started playing um like last week but you know we'll, we'll see what i can do so i've just stuck this is the survival kit right here Oh, it's upside down, so I'm not used to the survival kit interface being on the other side. Um, and I'm gonna tail the survival kit to turn the stone into ingot, ingots. And let's also put away the computers and large steel tubes so that I have more space. I'll pick up this scrap metal because at some point maybe I'll smelt that scrap metal too. Yeah, unfortunately, I lost one of those um, Atmo thrusters. I also lost a landing gear, but I'm not too worried about the landing gear. All right, production. Give me pistol magazines. Thank you. I might need to turn down the game just a smidge. Have I tried not landing like a poop? I didn't land this, man. This ain't my fault. <laughs> the drop pod, uh, if you're wondering, is not actually controllable when you land. You're just in a parachute in a passenger seat, so you have no uh, ability to do anything when you're in there. And because uh, I'm in the mountains, I landed sideways and smashed it. Well, I didn't smash it, it smashed. Whoa. All right, so I've made a little bit of ammo. There we go, 14 clips. Uh, next order of business is to set up a basic refinery. So the survival kit here can't smelt anything but stone, which means, and stone is a source of iron, as you can see, iron, nickel, and silicon. And also gravel. Gravel's pretty worthless. Um, but it doesn't actually s smelt ores. Um, so in order to smelt ores, I'm going to want to set up my own refinery. The other issue I'm going to have is, like, this is not a great place to set up a base. I don't know what kind of wind I'm going to get here up in the, like, let's call them the Alps or something. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to be wind-powered anyway. So... Uh, let's go ahead and get our armor block and start making steel plates. After we make a little bit more ammo, because God knows I'm going to get attacked a lot, I think. So I like to mine in, in like a bowl like this so that the stuff doesn't, because like... On this mountain, if I mined on the side of the mountain, these ores would just go rolling down the mountain forever, and I would have to go running to fetch them. It'd be obnoxious. So mining into like a cave like this is going to be a lot easier for me, I think. Inventory full.
Okay. So, starting the base. Uh, I like to start it actually right next to the respawn pod, so that you can have access to your survival kit pretty easily. And... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is uh, for a wind turbine. Having the wind turbine elevated uh, is going to help me to. Why? Oh, there it goes. Like lag. Um, to have it not be obstructed. Uh, can I flip the pod somehow? I can, uh, but not quite yet. In order to be able, well, there's a bunch of different ways to flip vehicles, uh, but one of the ways I probably want to flip a vehicle is just to replace the atmospheric thrusters, because there's really no point in flipping this pod right now, because it only has three thrusters, and you need at least six thrusters to be able to really do anything. Six, six thrusters allows you to go up, down, right, left, forward, and backward, and without those three, uh, without the three-axis movement, you only have a pod that can like go up or down, right or left, right? So um, it, it's not worth me flipping this thing back over until I can replace the thrusters that got damaged. All right, uh, I am gonna want a wind turbine. So let's put this on the bar here and I'm gonna need to print up uh, 10 interior plates. I'm gonna need eight motors and 20 construction comp. Twenty-four girders, two computers. I already have computers because the spiders gave them to me, and that's all I'm going to need. And I'm probably going to get more than one wind turbine uh, because one is not going to be enough to necessarily power everything up. I also don't know what kind of power my singular wind turbine is even going to yield. And yeah, I realize that you can flip over. Um, vehicles with just the weight of uh, steel plates or or armor. But again, like I said, there's no point until I can fly the thing. It's not going anywhere without more thrust. Unless I stick wheels on it, which I don't intend to do. Alright, the spiders do drop loot, but like, if you don't loot them immediately, their whatever they drop you disappears pretty quick. Well, some construction comps, some steel plates. And magnesium. Magnesium is going to be useful if I want to use a, a, a more powerful weapon. As it's uh, often used just for ammo. Not just, I mean, there's other purposes, but... Magnesium is kind of your bullets. Alright. Pretty Bill, thank you for the resub. And Mark for bits, inclined for bits. Thank you all. Whoa, I should watch where. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. I'm trying to keep the death count down. Just slamming into the side of the mountain repeatedly. Not so healthy, I've been told. You have about 3,500 hours in this game? Inventory Impressive. Full. Uh, the other thing I should probably grab is the hydrogen bottle out of my... Uh... Oh, right. Magnesium can't go in there. Grab the hydrogen bottle out of this thing so I can fly a little bit longer. So let's go to our... Essentially, an electrolyzer and grab the hydrogen bottle. So what that's going to do is it's going to replenish our hydrogen automatically in the bottom left of the screen. Um, the only downside about holding it is it does take up inventory space, so I'll be able to carry less when I'm like mining or constructing, but not a big deal. Just waiting on the girders, and then I need two computers.
Oh, girders are done. We're about to have power. Now it's functional. The rest of the interior plates would just armor it up a little bit, so if it took damage, it wouldn't get broken. Uh, not a big deal. Considering uh, I'm playing single player and there's not gonna be pirates like shooting at my base or whatever. Uh, so next order of business is to actually get the refinery, <clears throat> which is gonna take considerably more materials than I currently have. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And what I'm doing here is I'm just like marking out uh, roughly where my initial survival base is gonna be. Oops, I think I broke the structure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Because I would like to get to a point where um, the area that I craft in, this area, is like at least a little bit walled off so that I can be sort of left alone by the bugs. As bugs are not threats. I wish I could have picked somewhere f more flat, but I'm on the side of a cliff. You know, I didn't really have a lot of choices in the matter. Oh. Come on. Oh, I still can't see it. But it's going to be somewhat like a 7x7 seven seven cube like this with wind turbines on every corner. Probably very typical. Um, one thing I will say is, like, in prepping for this, I didn't take, like, really anyone else's... I'm really going in self-taught and blind, so, like, I'm sure I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, but at least they're my own mistakes, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, at least I won't have to worry about it as exactly. I'm going to have plenty of oxygen and hydrogen as a result. Uh, alright, so refinery. I want to put not on the outer wall, uh, so somewhere like... This. And for this, I will need about a hundred more steel plates. So let's go queue them up. Yeah, worrying about ice can really be like a bit of a downer early game if you use ice as a method for oxygen or fuel. So the fact that I'm up in this up in these hills means ice is gonna be easy to come by. However, traversing this terrain might be a little tricky. Trying to find um, nickel, cobalt, iron, etc. I suppose while I'm standing here, I might as well top up my uh, hydro bottle. If you stick the hydrogen bottle in the H2O2 generator, which is really just an electrolyzer, it will top up any bottles that you have. So I'll just have to remember to, to periodically top them up. Oh, hello, boogies. How long have I played? Uh, for like uh, two weeks. Anyone that has ever played Space Engineers probably outclasses me in terms of hours played. In other words. Well, I got uh, already four of the ten motors I'm going to need for the refinery, thanks to the bugs. One thing I might... Yeah, it's going to require a lot of stone to get the refinery up. But once that refinery is up, we'll be able to start refining metal rather than stone. So it's it's a very good goal.
Do I want keybind hints? No, no, I'm probably not gonna use them. Anyone familiar enough with uh, Space Engineers knows the game is complicated enough that, like, trying to incorporate, like, tips that don't matter while you try to stream and survive on a planet full of uh, angry, murderous spiders, probably not, not so easy. So I'd rather just play my way. And then if I have a question, I'm obviously there's experts in the chat, so that's awesome. I can pitch questions to you guys. I feel like I'm gonna jetpack into these trees. I'm just gonna get rid of them. Plus, uh, the trees were a little bit to blame for my crash landing. One of the trees actually landed on my pod. Xanth, thank you for the resub and Dead Dodo too. The fact that I'm cutting down trees, uh, there was like a shower thought on Reddit a while back that I read, and uh, it really got me thinking, which was essentially, in the scheme of the universe, wood and trees is probably far more precious of a material and rare than diamonds, which of course is true. Diamonds are actually pretty common out in space. Trees? Uh, we only know one planet that has trees. Weird food for thought, but food for thought nonetheless. And it's raining on my parade. Their whole stars with diamond cores? Yeah. I mean, is it. What is it? Neptune or Uranus? Like, it rains diamonds? Inventory full. There's some planets where it just like rains diamonds because all diamonds are is essentially compressed carbon, which is kind of a common thing, common material that exists. Whereas trees, man, no, oh, man. That's that's pretty, pretty rare, pretty, pretty rare stuff. Unfortunately in this game, I mean, maybe I don't really care, but like you don't ever use the trees. They're not like a resource. Unlike a lot of other survival games, this is just, you go from, Caveman in a spacesuit to caveman in a rocket ship pretty quick. It's both Uranus and Neptune have diamond rain. Yeah, I thought it was both. I don't I didn't want to be quoted in case I was wrong, you know. Diamonds aren't even rare on Earth? Yeah, no kidding. They really aren't. All right, we are a little over halfway there. Diamond rain instead of chocolate rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Diamond rain. I feel you. It's in my head now too. Saw something. Space ghosts. You know how it'd be. That little saw cutting the trees down is cracking you up. Nope. Not today, Satan. Not today. Say hello to my little friend. Where are you going? Okay. Are you just leaving me out to dry? Oh, you have a friend here. God, what's with all the large metal tubes? Dang it. Why I'm complaining is these large metal tubes are massive. They're honking, massive 
items that are useful later on for a lot of things, but like early on, they just take up a lot of inventory space. And uh, inventory space is kind of a hot commodity right now. I guess I could just like throw them on the ground and forget about them, but knowing that I'm gonna probably need them later on. Plus you can uh, disassemble them too. True, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to make it for a while, exactly. That's why I'm keeping them. I'm sticking to the passenger seat. That passenger seat probably looks pretty weird. One thing I wish that this game did was, like, airtight terrain. Like, I crap on stationeers every now and then, but one thing they got right is that terrain is airtight. Which is cool, because then you can build, like, cave bases. Any chance of a cave-in? Not that I know of. You agree about the terrain house? Yeah. It would be pretty neat. I'm sure, probably for, like, game engine reasons it doesn't exist you know yeah, there are no cabins yeah yeah exactly Boxes don't move and space engineers, they can and will kill you. Yeah. Like even like a a nickel sized I mean, I wonder if that's a PvP defense of like um like making your base into uh, uh essentially like inside of an asteroid where you mine out the majority of the asteroid, leaving tiny little little incy bincy specks of asteroid left as like a minefield so that if anyone tries to approach your base and they don't know how to get in, they just get shredded. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Micrometeorite weaponry. From that point, I suppose what you could do is you could uh, you could probably small grid weld up some microscopic debris and set it on stations so it's immovable and build your own minefield like that, but just using voxels seems way more meta and metal. And then you could use a, um, the AI pathing, uh, the AI pathing uh, AI recorder tasks to like record a safe path to get into your base so that you just like hit play and you dock automatically but like any hostile entity wouldn't have that safe recorder path I hear spideys the other thing I wish they fixed with spiders is um, sometimes they bug out which is kind of annoying where they'll like be stationary and they can't move there's ways to, like, unbug them, which is to move them uh, far away from them, and then they'll, like, fix themselves, but that happens. Yeah, spiders bug out. I know I know how that sounds. I know how ridiculous it sounds, but it's true. Now, I was pretty sure I heard two spiders attack me, but I don't see the other one. Okay. I'm just going to assume there was just one. Made a lot of noise. Let me unlock the Yoda cam. There we go. Inventory full. I should be getting close to the amount of um, plates I need. Buddy. 
<laughs> oh, he's so cute. Oh, what happened here? I queued up a hundred. Oh, no, I have a hundred. Okay, hold on. I was not noticing. Stop that. All right, what do I need next? Two comp, six motor. All right, refinery is coming. So the refinery, once that's up, um, the next logical step would be, it depends on how much power I'm generating. So either generate more power through wind, if I need more wind power in order to um, actually refine stuff. It, I don't know how much wind power that turbine is generating. It, it depends on elevation Inventory and full. terrain uh, obstructions. And generally speaking, you get more wind power in valleys rather than mountains. So because I'm really high elevation, I'm a little worried that wind power is going to be lackluster. But uh, I suppose we'll see. Well, that was a rude eruption. So if you're wondering, these spiders do, what, like 40 damage a hit? So if you get hit um, three times, you're dead. Their AI is a little uh, simple. They're kind of easy to avoid. But they're very pleasurable to kill. Construction comp, nice. Some computers. More computers. Man, these uh, these spiders are smarter than I am. And motors. Ah, I love when they give me motors. Motors are expensive to make because they require a lot of nickel. You think spiders and wolves ruin space engineers? Well, lucky for you, you can turn them off. Alright, refine that all the way so it can't get destroyed very easily. And this wind turbine just barely produces enough power in order to allow the refinery to run. Uh, but that's good because... Oh, that's a refinery, not an assembler. Um, Alright, what I'm going to do next is look for ore deposits, but what should I build next? Basic assembler. So the basic assembler would allow me to um, start assembling things with the, you know, and I can attach it to the ore refinery to make it a little bit more automatic. Um, I could also do, do a build a battery or build perimeter walls. I'll just leave those options for you, the viewers, to decide. And... I'm gonna look for ores. Now, because my respawn pod is um, right next to my base, I don't really need to GPS marker my respawn pod, or my base rather, because they're like on top of one another. Um, I also might want some additional bullets before I go. Uh, this seat is almost full. It's been very useful storage for me. I think there is a small cargo crate in there. Um, but because I'm moving items around, I can't easily gain access to it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, is it? Oh, no, I guess it's it's uh, it's hooked up that I can move things to it. That's cool. It, it's volume, though, is tiny. 125 liters, whereas the seat is 1,000 liters. So it doesn't really store very much. 
All right, so I got my ammo. Uh, let's go looking for ores. So I'm gonna search in... Once you have your drill out, your drill has like a built-in ore detector. Not a very powerful one, but hey, it's what we've got. Uh, I'm gonna search in... Like a, a spiral pattern going out from the base there. One thing I'm wondering is, why isn't my drill picking up the fact that there's ice everywhere? I mean, I'm kind of glad that it's not like, hey, ice. But still. I do know about or, uh, ground or patch discolorations. I don't know if it's going to be particularly useful in this kind of mountain, however. But I can try it. Let's see if I can spot one. Here, I'll go back to the respawn pod and I, I'll, I'll try to spot one the cheese way. Yoink! So, where you have ore patches, the terrain will often be discolored. Um, it's way more obvious in like a desert where it's all sand and it's easy to spot ores that way. And it looks like we're going to make a battery next. But uh, as I feared, because I'm in like a mountainside, it's far more difficult to spot ground patch discoloration. Unless it like happens to perfectly align with the, uh, the snow. But I'm not seeing anything that's screaming, hey, I'm an ore node to me right now. Also, I'm inexperienced, so I don't, you know, I I've seen it before, but I just... I don't want to jetpack up so high. I'm just going to go exploring like this. I don't want to be tempting the fates with running out of hydrogen and plummeting to my death. I'm trying to keep the death count low. I, uh... I'm not delusional. I don't think the death count's going to stay at zero. It's very easy to die in Space Engineers from clang or other high-velocity impact. Ah! Nickel! Noise. Found some nickel. Alright, so let's mark this down. And while I'm here, I might as well grab some. Ultimately, yeah, I'm really looking for, like, cobalt. As cobalt is what's required to be able to put my, um my pod ship back together. But nickel's nice to find. Now, what I'm really worried about is spiders spawning behind me, because I can't, I won't be able to get out if they come in the cave here. They'll fill the cave and I'll be stuck. Always a little sketchy. Nope, not today, Satan. I was listening for them. Boo! I am the angel of death. <laughs> they really swiggity swooty coming for my booty. A minute I go in there. All right, let's drop the stone. I don't need stone anymore. They generally spawn in like. Uh, uh, you know, periodically, meaning that because I just killed some, I'm probably... Oh no, oh no, I hear you. I was gonna say, I'm probably gonna have reprieve for a bit. How goes the not dying? Ah, pretty good so far. They only have six legs? Well, you know, they're not Earth spiders, they're alien spiders. They're not even arachnids, then. Maybe they're just harvestmen. And they're trying to harvest my blood. So we we found the nickel, and I put a GPS marker there, uh, so I can find my way back. GPS markers are great for marking down stationary locations. Uh, why am I interacting with that? That'd be wrong. All right, here we go. Whoops. Nickel time.
top up my power, my oxygen, my hydrogen. I'll fill the bottle and then I'll go back out. Thank you for tuning in to Space Engineers, which originally streamed live on Twitch September 23rd as a mini series. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you have any feedback, well, keep in mind that this series was a one time streamed only series, so changes cannot be made, and I don't have any plans to play Space Engineers again, so tips aren't needed. If you would like to catch live streams of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. And if you'd like to join my online gaming community on Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video or at Rodamont.com as well. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Twitch subscribers, Patreon patrons, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream of another game. Farewell, my fellow engineers, 